Thanks for joining us on the line of fire. And to some that are watching on YouTube, Tony and Rosemary and Tess and Carlos and Jordan and Dylan and others, glad to have you on 866-34-TRUTH. Let me change subjects for a moment and say that if you did not read my article over the weekend, this God restraining Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, I strongly encourage you to check it out. I lay out there a number of reasons why I am confident that God acts in this world to restrain evil. Yes, he allows other things to happen. He does not restrain certain things he ordains and moves forward. There are other things that he stops or slows down. I believe we would have fully destroyed ourselves if not for that. So I give scriptural evidence for that. You can read that on my website, askdrbrown.org, askdrbrown.org. Let me get back to something I started with at the beginning of this half hour, namely identity politics, namely the attack on people for who they are rather than having real discussion about issues. People are going to be put in categories, and based on that categories, you either listen to them or mock them. You either applaud them or demonize them. So uh, Alan Dershowitz Uh, This Saturday, past Saturday, so two days ago, was on Fox and Friends, and he gives a great little description about identity politics. Well, he says one thing in there that that, that I don't agree with, but, but listen to the way he describes identity politics. Both the hard right and the hard left engage in identity politics. For the hard left, we're not going to listen to you. Unless you're black, unless you're transgender, your identity determines the quality of your ideas. The neo-Nazi old hard, hard right says the same thing. If you're Jewish, forget about it. We're not listening to you unless you're white. So we have to get away from this racial identity politics. Move us all toward the center. Yeah, now here's where I differ. We don't all have to move towards the center in order to do that. Oh yeah, if we're at some negative, destructive extreme, and that's what he's talking about, come away from the the far extremes where you wanna kill each other. Okay, yeah, of course, I agree with that. But we don't have to be in the center to transcend identity politics. What it simply means is this, whether you're black or white or or yellow or green, whether you're tall or short, whether, whether you're male or female, whether you're rich or poor, I'm going to look at you as a fellow human being and interact with you based on what you have to say and believe rather than your skin color or your ethnicity or your sex. That's not going to be the focus. Now, I, I have to say that under President Obama, we had eight years of identity politics. And now under President Trump, we have a different type of divisive leading. And, and this is not helpful for the nation. Come on. A, a, a lot of people breathe the sigh of relief in, in, in the midst of the pain and the upheaval caused by the hurricane and natural disasters that finally the media was talking about human needs and highlighting people helping other people as opposed to each side bashing each other politically. And even though I have serious concerns about where Mr. Trump is now going, And is he selling out some of his base? Is he just compromising with Democrats on key issues? I have concerns about where that might go in the future. A lot of people say, hey, we just need unity. We just need unity. We've had it with these identity politics. Ben Shapiro, speaking at Berkeley University, I wrote about that as well. If you haven't read that article, all on the website, askdrbrown.org. Here is Ben Shapiro, 33-year-old Orthodox Jew, White supremacists, signs up. We don't want your white supremacist BS. Hey, hey, ho, ho. White supremacy has got to go. Ben's an Orthodox Jew. He's never uttered a white supremacist word, but this is the type of libelous labeling that goes on rather than saying, well, let's see what you have to say and let's see if we agree or disagree. If, if you came to me and you're a woman and, and you radically differ with my interpretation of the Bible, my only issue is, okay, what's your argument about Scripture? Not are you woman or, or man. If you come to me and, and I'm white, you're black, and you differ with me about my views on Israel, my only issue is, okay, what are your views? Not what's your color, what are your views, all right? And, and 
I am not going to put people into these categories. I wrote an article the other day how the left and right actually need each other because we fill in gaps in our sensitivities or we have blind spots where we need to hear each other. Even if we're not willing to move an inch from our convictions, we still need our blind spots filled in. So listen to what Ben Shapiro had to say at Berkeley about this whole white supremacist nonsense. As far as the idea I'm a white supremacist, you see the thing on the top of my head, right? This funny hat. It's called a yarmulke. Hey, white supremacists aren't that fond of it, which is why I was, according to the Anti-Defamation League, the number one recipient of white supremacist anti-Semitism on the internet among journalists in 2016. But no, I'm a white supremacist now, because this is the way the left works, right? If you don't agree with them, everyone's a white supremacist. You're a Nazi, Nazis should be punched, and therefore it's totally fine to stand outside and try to shut down events if you can get away with it. Yeah, exactly. The yelling, the screaming, the, pro the protesting, and by the way, with police in place, they didn't have all the property damage that they had when police backed off uh, in, in the past. And I don't think police were happy to, to back off, but that's what they were told to do. And, and look, I've watched it for years now. I knew, I didn't have to be a rocket scientist to know this, the moment I took issue with gay activism, I'm going to be branded a Nazi, even though I'm Jewish as well. I'm a Messianic Jew, Ben's an Orthodox Jew, but I'm Jewish as well. I'm going to be branded a Nazi immediately. Well, it's part of the plan. It's part of the rhetoric. You disagree with a progressive idea, you will now be called a Nazi or KKK. And then, sure, on the other side, there's all kinds of name-calling and libelous junk as well. I'm not justifying any of it. And, and here, judge me by what I say. Judge me by what I say, by what I write, by how I live, not by someone else that's, that, that, that is also a believer in Jesus or also a Messianic Jew or also an American. Just judge me by the content of what I say, the content of my character, the content of what I write, and that's, that'd be perfectly fine. But you know, something else that struck me is that when we refer to all of our ideological opponents as Nazis, everybody gets branded a Nazi. It actually degrades the evil of the Nazi. It, it, it helps us forget how extraordinarily barbarous and murderous these people were and how demented and demonic Adolf Hitler was. And, and we start just name calling, throwing around, we, we actually degrade the memory of evil. Yeah, we, we do. So, friends, let's put ideas on the table. Let's put issues on the table. Let's debate the issues. Let's discuss the issues. But let us move beyond this. Pressing a button to just get emotions. I've had it sometimes when I've debated people that they just figure out where the audience is at and then press a button to get an emotional reaction from the audience. We're like, that's not what we're talking about in the debate. So let's step higher. Let's do better than that. I challenge every one of you on social media, in your interaction with others. Let's represent ourselves as worthy of the Lord, as ambassadors of the Lord, as those who are quick to hear, ah, slow to speak, and slow to anger.